Hey, what's up guys, John Stayskull here. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can improve your code set and essentially bulletproof it from setup errors due to missing components, which are a very common thing when beginning with Unity and C Sharp. So I'm gonna guide you through the whole process and show you how to use this special attribute called the required component tag. Oh, and if you're new here, please do subscribe to the channel as I have plenty more game dev tips and tricks and tutorial videos coming up very soon. All right, let's get into it. So I've got this example scene here with a player game object. It's still a Mega Man dude. And you can see in the property inspector, I have various different um, components that you might find on a play controller of this kind of nature. We've got a sprite renderer for visualizing the player, a box collider for doing uh, collisions with the environment, and a rigid body for moving the player around. And just this player script, which will have all the code. Uh, so let's go into that script now. And you can see here, I have various references to this rigid body component. For this player controller to function correctly, it requires the rigid body. What will happen now if we remove this rigid body component and try to run this? Well, dun, 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 it throws an error down here because it can't find the rigid body component we're trying to reference. So I'll just undo that and bring that rigid body um, back. So I'm gonna show you now a trick how to quickly deal with that um, problem and minimize these kind of errors through the power of this attribute tag here. And we're gonna type require component, open and closing brackets. And in here, we're gonna say type of, okay? And another open and closing bracket. And this time we're gonna now type the component we want to be on this uh, game object. So now, we've said this game object must have the rigid body component to function. So now look what happens when I try to remove this rigid body. Boom, look, I get a warning. Can't remove rigid body because the player script depends on it. You see? So it means you can't remove this component accidentally. I can make a copy of that. Now I can say uh, box collider 2D, or I can even say, sprite renderer because all these components are mandatory for this particular um, uh, player to function. So now if I try to remove the sprite renderer, nope, can't do it. The box collider, nope, can't do it. And of course, if you wanted to remove these, you would simply go in here and delete these required tags. So I think you can see the power in that and how useful it can be to mitigate these kind of errors that often pop up through not having the right component set up. But there is more to this feature. So we only looked at the kind of the standard components, but what if we wanna deal with other scripts because we wanna have various kind of script breaks, breakdowns. So I've got this um, input script here, just as an example. And let's say this input script, you know, requires different things and require, in this case, it actually needs the player script and they kind of depend on each other. So what we can now do I go into that player script and I can now say, hey, this play game object requires this input script. So now it says I need this input script to work. And the same goes for that. If I try to remove it, I can't. So what if I accidentally remove this player script? I can do that, you see, and that's a problem. Well, I can go into this input script and say, you know what, we need a player script. So now we have this back and forth relationship of mandatory required dependency. So now if I try to remove this, I can't. So in effect, all these components are locked to this um, player game object. It's very, very powerful. So I'm gonna now show you one more trick. So in the, in the examples I've shown you, I've, I've given you demonstrations of components which are already added. But the other part of this is that this attribute will actually add components automatically that you've deemed mandatory and critical. Check this out. So to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna remove this required tag from the input and remove this required tag there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna delete some of these components. So I'll delete this input script and I'll delete this player component and I'll delete this rigid body. 
So I'll just go back into the script and explain to you guys, guys what's going to happen. Um, so we are telling this um, game object through this script that we, we require an input script, we re require a rigid body, a box collider, and a sprite renderer. But you can see here we only have a sprite renderer and box collider. And you know what, I'll even remove this box collider. And we can, of course, because that script is not attached, which is enforcing these rules. So look what happens now when I add that player script. Ha! Huh. Look at that. It automatically added all these different components. It added the input script, it added a box collider, it added a rigid body all automatically. And of course it will add it with the default values. So this may not be the most appropriate usage, but it shows the potential in just making sure, if you have that tag there, it will just make sure that you don't accidentally run into a situation in your game where a component is not there that should be there. So hopefully this video has given you some insight in how you can bulletproof your code in your own projects using this required component attribute. If you found it useful, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I have plenty more game dev tips and tricks and tutorials and other things um, coming up. And a big thanks to my Patreon supporters up here for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. See you all in the next video.